cut open the shoe live. We're going to go through everything on the Pro Pulse Fury 3. I'm going to go through the entire review. I actually have scenes set up here, probably because that scene had a, that's probably because the scene had uh, audio flowing. So, all right. So let's say, let's go through the review of the Pro Pulse Fury. So I'm going to get my knife out. And I only actually have two blades left. But I already cut the top half of the Pro Pulse Fury open. Um, audio from the video is like, so okay, thanks. Thanks, Nadri, if I'm pronouncing your name right. So I already cut the top half of the shoe open because I had to do the ball bearing test on it. So that was cut open. So just to show you real quick, this is one of the most, let me make sure that I'm right. This is one of the most padded tongues I think I've ever seen. This thing is enormous. And then it's got, what's pretty cool, it's got drag guard going all the way medial, which is pretty insane, um, which I really like. Now what I like here on the drag is, is you've got the outsole tread coming up really high, then the drag guard here on the uppers is just like super beefy, uh, which I really like because in some shoes you get just a little drag area and then other than the rest of the upper is exposed, whereas this has urethane going all the way through the upper, then a pretty large patch of just, I mean, there's not even a panel here. It's just straight urethane uh, for dragging and sliding, which I really like. So let's get into tearing them. Can everyone see? I'm looking at my screen, making sure that I'm Thanks, Matthew. All right. So you guys can see how much I struggle with this sometimes. What you don't see on the video is this guy cut all this out. There we go. All right. A lot of times when I'm tearing these down, it's easier just to do it by hand, tear the foam, which is a lot of times easier than using the knife because these knife blades these knife blades dull out so quick, uh, and I use the good ones too, and I still usually have to use both sides for one shoe, and that's not even a carbon fiber plated shoe. If it's carbon fiber, I'm going with like five blades. All right. Let's cut. And usually what holds me up, it's not so much the, um, the shank, it's the rubber on the treads. And by the way, I did get these sent to me from Tennis Point USA. I do have links in the description there, too. Sorry, Nate, I didn't say that earlier. See, like I said, it's easier just to rip them open. But on the videos, a lot of times when I cut them, I have to leave a little bit here so I can do my little, you know, my thing. Okay. So, um, all right, so on the uppers, like I said, the thing that I like about the Pro Pulse line as well as the Jet Mock line on the Babolats is that they have way more drag protection, way more ergonomic drag protection than a lot of other shoes out there. Uh, they, they offer some of the same drag protection, something like the Nike Vapor Cage 4, but a lot more, you know, just they're a lot more comfortable. I mean, Babolat makes a super comfortable shoe. Someone in the chat was saying back like in the Rodic Pro Pulse days, and, and that was... You know, honestly, those weren't the most comfortable things out there. I liked them, but they've come so far since then. Like you said, I mean, I do wish they still had the retention straps on them, but that's a whole other thing. So the one thing I like and I don't like about the Fury 3 is that the tongue is gusseted, which means the tongue is attached to the rest of the uppers, right? It's not independent. It's not floating, but it's gusseted way high. Like if you look at the elastic, make sure people can see this. Yeah. So if you look at the elastic, it's right there. And that's really high up on the shoe. So right where your ankle is in the shoe, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of elastic there. And a lot of times it can bunch up or just allow the shoe to not be as, uh, not be as conforming around your ankle. So the entry into these is pretty big. It's like the Yonex, not the Eclipsian 3, but the Fusion Rev 4. It feels a lot like that, except it's not really a slipper tongue, but it kind of is. The next thing that's pretty cool about these, but also is a liability, is on the lateral side, if you look at the lace line, it's got double eyelets going all the way down. So you get a really good lockdown on the lateral side. But on the medial side, it has those guarded ankle, it has those um, guarded lace eyelets. So when you're dragging and sliding, you don't rip into them. The problem is, I get this thing over here, is you get this really great lockdown here on the lateral side. But then on the medial side, 
it, it's just these little thread barn um, lace eyelets. And so when I was looking at them, my only concern is that this could rip really easily. So, and because with these, the laces are a little bit wimpy. So I would suggest putting bigger laces in these. And that way, a little more surface area contact on there. Maybe the these things don't rip. I guess you could put some mole skin in there to, to beef them up a little bit. But that would be my one concern. That's my other concern about the Adidas Cybersonic is those little lace eyelets as well. So, yeah, I... I may not have a knife sponsorship, but I may have a sponsorship with something else that might be pretty cool coming up in the same space. So watch out for that. But yes, thank you. Uh, all right. So let's get into the upper durability test. The Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. Which one did I do it on? This one. Uh, did not get through the urethane on that. I did this earlier today. You can see it there. The thing is, is the urethane is so thick on these, it wouldn't like it doesn't really matter to be honest i mean it's so thick that even if it wasn't the strongest urethane it's still going to give more drag protection than most shoes out there and this is a little bit of a softer urethane because you know they don't want the shoe to become really uh stiff and, and uncomfortable because uh, the shoe like i said in the uppers is really comfortable i have not looked at these on the microscope yet so you're looking at these for the first time with me but yeah, just like a chain link textile. Hopefully, let me see it out there. <laughs> the shoe under it. There you go. Those are, these are the adventures in live streaming. Now I even put the shoe under there. There you go. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just chain link. So it's just a like a kind of a standard textile upper with chain link under there. So, I mean, but still pretty breathable. So if you look at it, I did the breathability test on these as well on the uppers. Let me just get to my data here. So on the Fury, they heated up 141.5 degrees, which isn't the worst, but it's definitely, it, it's a little more of a heat trapping shoe. And then it cooled 67 degrees after 30 seconds being off of the, the heater. So, you can't really expect much more. The whole shoe's covered in urethane, plus this super fat padded tongue. I mean, that is just awesome. So if you're playing with these outdoors, make sure you get a lighter colorway of these. Maybe the darker colorways do trap heat a little bit more. They hold on to heat more. Uh, and so, I, like I said, the lighter colorways are worth a few degrees, but um, chill your socks, change socks, foot powder. Watch my video on how to keep your feet dry in really, really hot socks. I have a video titled with that exact title. Let me see here. I'm just going to take one question here because this looks pretty timely. Does a shoe really need that much drag protection? Feels like overkill. Crocs, man. I really hope that you like wear Crocs and like them so much that you made it your YouTube name because that would be awesome. So, yeah, because so many people drag nowadays. I mean, I don't know about you, but every club I play at, there's always somebody walking up to me saying that they've like busted a hole right here on their shoe or they just have one circle right there and they're like why do i get this one circle well it's because that's where you're dragging so i think with so many people dragging so much now and it, even people that aren't like really shouldn't be dragging or don't need to do it just to look cool like i know i see a lot of people like like sliding into shots but it's only their back leg that's sliding and i know me on my forehand if i'm even hitting remotely like inside out, I always sweep my back leg under me to get like, I don't, I don't do like two steps. Like I should be right. I just do this like drag step cause I'm lazy. So, um, yeah, I think people do. I don't think it's overkill at all. Okay. All right. So let's get in the midsole tear down. Now these have the KPRSX midsole it's like the same as in the jet mock line that really like super nice foam um so i'll get into the universal rating system in a second uh but if you look at it on the teardown what i think is really interesting is the heel foam the dual density heel foam so this is the softer foam here in the yellow and then the white foam is the harder density foam now both of these are pretty doughy they feel like cookie dough the the yellow or like the iridescent tennis ball color one is it's significantly lighter but what's interesting of that is is because it doesn't come that far into the heel i'm actually surprised it doesn't come that far 
what this is really for is it's really for kind of like your first step. Let me make sure I get it on here. It's really for like the transition step, right? So when you're coming down, coming down this way. Sorry if that's loud. Um, and it also has a little bit of a rocker here. So this is more meant for comfort on that like lunge step or when you're like really taking big strides. It doesn't really matter if you're playing up on the balls of your foot a lot. You're just going to be under the real kind of like cookie dough type EVA. Now this is EVA. It's a full bed of EVA. It's just dual density EVA that that's all KPRSX is. I don't know if you know what that actually stands for. Someone leave it in the comments. I have no idea. Uh, but what I found was with the midsole foam, it, it felt just like the Jet Mach 3, just super plush, super comfortable, a little more elastic under there, just a little more comfort. Um, Babolat recently, since the Jet, the Jet Mach 2, was comfortable when it bottomed so quick. Once they got to the Jet Mach 3, they, you think they really kind of dialed in their midsole foam, and I think they're one of the best out there in terms of mi midsole foam. I would say them and Lotto right now have the very best like concoctions of midsole foam. Their, their recipes are the best. Maybe not necessarily the best shoe for everybody, but the midsole foam to me is, is phenomenal. So um, now I'm gonna try to go to a new scene here and mute it. Now the movie, let's turn that down. Okay, so can you just let me know if this scene is no longer giving a lot of like bad sound. Can someone just let me know if this, like can you, are you, is everyone hearing me okay now? Cause I know in the beginning uh, these were, these were really bad. Um, Al, I will answer that in a second in the, um, when I get to the fit. But if anybody can just let me know if this uh, if the sound now is still okay, it's perfect. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Okay, let me just get back to eCam. Okay, so I want to show you the jump height test and everything here. So on the jump height test, I got eighteen point five centimeters on the jump height test. There it is. These do not bend particularly well because they are so wide in the forefoot. Thanks, mom. Um, so my mom just texted me saying I sound okay. Uh, so these are pretty wide in the forefoot. The flange is super wide. So anytime you get a super wide flange shoe, a lot of times they don't bend as well. Like if you look at the Adidas Cybersonic, it transitions so easily because flange isn't so wide. They're not a staple side to side though. So with these, um, the transition of step it is not as easy until you really break this in. That's gonna take you about three or four days, I would say, playing in these to to get them better. Um, but interesting that, I mean, 18.5, that, that's pretty good. It's better than the, the Diodora Finale, which was a really easy transition shoe. The foam in these is just pretty elastic. Now, if we go into the, if we go into the bounce height test, I just want to make sure because these are ultra slow mo. Sometimes it's hard to capture it. Okay. All right. So interestingly enough, in the heel, it's twenty eight point five centimeters, and if you go into the forefoot, it's twenty nine point five centimeters. Now, what I thought was pretty weird is is before I cut because I, I did it before I cut it open. But I thought, well, if there's all this less dense foam back here, I would assume it'd either be way worse or way better depending on kind of the concentration of the foams. But then it didn't really have any difference. And I was like, well, it's only one, I mean, one centimeter on the bounce height test could some, could maybe be a little bit of air. Like if you do it 20 times, you know, does, does it, you know, does it even out? And that's just because there's so little of that foam there. I mean, if the ball contacted it like right here, you know, it, it's not going to do much. So I would say for the bounce height on these, this dual density EVA isn't really doing much. It's it's the, the rest of the bed of just kind of like the standard EVA that, that's doing the work. Now, I think the best part of the Pro Pulse Fury, the three, is that it's got almost this like number seven type shank. So the shank comes just one stripe into the mid part, mid foot of the shoe. And then you get the lateral bar, this lateral container here. And I think it's so smart that um, some basketball shoes are doing this too, where they're starting to put the lateral containment a little bit further forward in the shoe to give more containment for like a, a truly side-to-side -side stop, right? So you don't want to roll 
kind of in pure inversion or eversion because when you put the container up here you're looking more for like supination control and a lot of times in tennis it's, it's a pure inversion type spring you're, you're not you're not getting triplane motion it's, it's uniplane motion and i love that here because it's wider blocks a little more of that motion the only problem is, is the ankle collar is so wide and they are a little bit more tough to tie down that the containment isn't isn't there so um but let's get to the first round of the universal rating system here and then i will uh kind of you know we'll start from there and then get back to my regular scene so on the universal rating system for containment i only gave them a three out of five because they are a little bit hard to tie down now, when we get to the fit, we'll talk about how to augment that and certain foot types are, are gonna be better for these than others. Uh, others aren't, aren't gonna be as good. For bounce, I gave them a four out of five because I mean, it does have a, a decent bounce height for the shoe. The problem with that is, like I said, the break in time where you're actually gonna get that good bounce uh, is a little bit longer. Now, because Babolat's foam is so much more durable, you're, you're gonna get better durability out of that foam. So I think these are going to have better bounce for longer versus some other shoes that may have better initial bounce. That's why they got up to a four out of five. Uh, the shock absorption, I gave them an easy five out of five. Uh, that foam, if you've ever been in the Jet Mach 3, you'll know that foam really absorbs shock uh, incredibly well. Okay, so let's get to the outsole tread. Alright, now the outsole tread is like a lot of other Babolat shoes in that it's more of like a dotted pattern or more of like a rain tire type pattern. I guess it's a Michelin sole, so that makes sense. Um, now on a hard court, these grip perfectly. They have nice sliding channels, these two guys right here. Um, and then on the lateral side, it's more of just like a, a pockmark type pattern, so they will stop. Um, if you're kind of if you're trying to come to a really hard stop side to side now I wouldn't try to use these on clay whatsoever there's way too much surface area uh, jutting out however on a hard court these grip phenomenal just like jet Mach 3 does um, you know just like a lot of other Babolat shoes do now on the outsole durability test the Dremel 10 second size grit sandpaper I mean not even I'll show you here not even a millimeter of damage you can bet I bet it's kind of hard to see even on camera not even a millimeter of damage uh, these go to about almost a four millimeter tread depth which is awesome so if you're looking for like really the ultimate shoe in sliding dragging all that durability these really are it the problem is if you look at the speed ratio of these they come in at what 14.57 ounces they only got 29 centimeters on average of bounce height so it comes in at a 1.99 now for the profile of the shoe I don't th I think that's not so bad it's just the fact like I said they're not as easy to tie down there is a lot of room in the ankle collar so sometimes it's the confidence to move really fast in these that that, that could be the, the biggest problem at least that would be my biggest problem with them. however so uh, on the URS for speed what I give I gave them a three out of five for speed I think once you break them in all the tools are there for you to move pretty quick in these you got to be okay with some more degrees of freedom around your ankle though okay so let's get to the fit now someone asked in the comments do they fit wide or are they going to have a wide version they're, they're very wide to begin with and the uppers because they are all mostly just textile you know they're going to accommodate a lot of different foot types plus they have so much elastic in the uppers you know with the gussets and everything on them that they're going to expand pretty well so a narrow and medium foot i if it's me and I want these, I'm going to go down a half size on them. You might be a little bit snug in the toe box, but at least you'll get that really good lockdown and be able to use all the tools of the shoe. If you're a 2E foot, you know, I'd be trying to put moleskin around them or something because you really can't go down a half size if, if you're a 2E. Really, I mean, they're a true to size shoe. Maybe two pairs of socks. Uh, I, I have to look. They're somewhere down here, but there, there's a little pad you can put around the heel counter of the shoe. I'll link them in the description uh, once I edit this video. But there is heel pads you can put around these that can kind of suck your foot in a little bit more. But on that medial side with, with the gusset on there with that elastic, uh, they're, they're just going to expand a little bit more. And like I said, the harder you tie these down, the more you're going to, the more risk you're going to run a bust in the shoelace eyelets. So even though they fit really nice for a wide foot, I honestly think that they are better 
for narrow and medium feet just because you can get them down a half size to lock them in better. Now, somebody with heel pain, ball of foot pain, I think they're fine. Tendonitis on the medial side, like like painful flat foot arch pain, I'm not, I don't love them just because they allow so much play. I think if you are that narrow foot and you go down the half size on these, and I think they're really good because you get that really nice snug fit in there. Probably would still be throwing a low profile orthotic in these uh, for that. Achilles tendonitis, I think they're great because they offload the Achilles really well. You get all that nice soft padding back there. But then you get the more dense padding underneath of there. So your so your your heel isn't rocking back and forth a ton. Uh, so I think for those that's fine. So for comfort on the URS, I'm gonna give them what did I give them? Yeah, for comfort, I'm going to give them a 5 out of 5. For durability, obviously, a 5 out of 5. For support, though, only a 3.5 out of 5 because you have to be the right person to really get kind of good use out of these. I just think on that medial side, there, there's just – let me see if I can get the video of them. On that medial side, I mean, look, there's just – there's a little bit too much play in there uh, versus on the lateral side where just a lot – they just have a, a lot more there for you. Okay. Now, the all-important playability. So now I can play these and not uh, make everybody want to their ears bleed. So, like I said, what I would say when I was playing in these, if you're watching this right here, the, the one thing I was having just this with my dad and I warming up, um, the one thing I would say is I just did not have – the crazy confidence in these going side to side like I did with some others. I think my foot just did not match up with the shoe. They were super comfortable. I had no problems with pain or anything. I actually felt super resilient on these. We even see like right there. I just, just did not want to run for that ball. I just didn't feel like uber confident. This is just me warming up. I've got better videos coming up. But I would think if you are someone that does like the Fusion Rev 4 type feel or any other like slipper tongue type feel shoes where you guys got a lot of play in the shoe and you can kind of, you can get really low, you can get really low for balls in these, which I really like. They allow a lot of that sliding and I think that's why they're built the way they are. They're built to be able to crease and kind of get out of your own way and get out of your foot's way so you can really kind of do the splits in them. I like the Jet Mock line still a lot more than these because you can tie the jet mocks down a lot better and i feel like the the shank on the jet mock 3 is a little bit better a little bit more durable i like the padding of the of the propulse fury better than the jet mock but i think for performance i definitely would want the propulse fury over the jet mock 3 for sure um let's see what else i got Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I, once I got used to them, you can see, like, you know, I'm, I'm starting to play a little bit harder in them. Um, and and so I got a little bit more confident. Uh, my, my dad hits shots, like, right at me. So it's it's not – he's a lot easier to play than other people because, like, he can put the ball literally right on my racket every time. So it's, you, it's a lot easier to feel confident playing with him. Uh, so m maybe playing against someone who's, like, trying to, like, you know, run me ragged. Uh, would be a little bit harder. And like I said, when we were playing points, I didn't have as as much confidence. Um, but my forehand's been really off recently anyway. You can see I'm just pushing on some of these. Uh, so, I mean, that might also be a reason I'm not, you know, I didn't love the shoes. I did play with them three times. Uh, tw once with uh, Nate at Tennis Point, played with my dad, and then I also hit against the wall with them as well. So I had probably had a good five and a half, six hours with these on court. And... It, it just, like I said, it just felt like for me being someone, like I said, coming off of an ankle sprain, ankle break, as you can see right there, just dumping a forehand into the net. Um, yeah, so Matthew, I, I just answered that. It, it, it takes about three, four, I'd say it's about, it takes about three, four sessions in them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, as someone coming off of an ankle sprain, these definitely were, were not the the best for me. I know I've heard a lot of hype on these about how great they are. And even, like I said, serving, just looking at this, they were really, I mean, just, they were really nice to serve. And I was getting some nice pop off of them. They matched my uh, Bombas socks too, so that was nice. But, but um, it, I mean, so that was good. It, it's just that, you know, for some of these, let me see if I have some, I, have a, I think I have a point we played here at some point. Yeah, here we go. 
but I would just say it's it's a confidence game. If, if you want something that, that's going to give you a lot of degrees of freedom, then they're great because they're so padded and comfortable. They're awesome. It's just if you want something like you can really lace up and kind of, you know, have a lot of more confidence that they're going to not move around, I, I say you go with the, the Jet Mach 3. So let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I got one more. Do I have one more? Yeah, here we go. So here's when we actually started playing points. And, I mean, just moving anything on my left foot. It, this, this was this was like three weeks ago I, we did this. So my, my left foot was still hurting pretty bad here. I mean, I was, you know, I was in some pain there. Uh, but let me just go back to the beginning of this. Where I was going side to side. I just want to see where I'm, what I'm doing here. Yeah, I mean, if you look like my left foot, like I'm really still... Yeah, I mean, that's weak. catching my breath and then let me go into here yeah i mean i just i think maybe you know for me i got these at the wrong time in my life having like i said that was my shot um having an like i said breaking my ankle and having the ankle sprain these were just shoes that allowed way too much motion at least for, for me to feel super comfortable in. You know, when I had some other shoes on at the time, like when I had the Gel Resolution 9s on and the Cord FF3s, like I, I was just, I was feeling so good in them. Um, I mean, right there, I mean, I was able to plant right there. I mean, I got, a, I mean, I got what, a centimeter off the ground there. So, I mean, I was able to plant a little bit more, but like I said, when you're in pain trying to play, uh, it's, it's hard. So, I, I mean, I think maybe now that it's three, four weeks later after I played with them, maybe i'm a little you know maybe i'd have a little bit of a different opinion in them but i, I at least to me if, if you like a lot of degrees of freedom you're gonna love them if you like more of a glove like fit on you if you like something that, that that's more um you know that just is going to give you that little bit better uh lockdown type feel i think maybe go with with the jet mock 3 or something else so with these thing we came to what 32 out of 40 on the universal rating system playability i gave them a three and a half out of five and like I said, when I did these on them, like I said, I think I was thinking of someone, I was thinking with the mind of someone that was coming off of an ankle break and an ankle sprain. So like I said, maybe I'll take another pair out now that I'm feeling a lot better and seeing how I feel. But, you know, I still had a good right foot and I'm still a foot doctor. So I, I, I still know, you know, what, what a shoe has and what it doesn't. And like I said, I think with these, a lot of creativity, a lot of degrees of freedom, you'll love them. If you don't like that, you're not going to like them. All right. Let's uh, go to some Q&A. Thanks for bearing with me through my first live teardown of these. Um, all the stats on them will be in the uh, tennis shoe guide that I have in the description uh, right there. But I will just give a quick heel to toe. So these are 2.5 heel height, 2.5 centimeter heel height, and a 1 centimeter heel to toe drop. I always measure right at the extent of the ball of the foot for heel to toe drop. I really don't think it matters up here because why like why would you care like when you're up on the balls of your foot what do you really care what the heel to toe drop is because you're up on the balls of your foot um and so when you're standing like this right your metatarsals are on the ground the ball of your foot and the heels on the ground that's you know that's kind of how you judge so i usually go heel to distal ball of foot and that's my heel to toe drop that's a lot of times why my heel to toe drops are off from, from like a company's website because I actually do the functional heel to toe drop versus just what does the tip of the shoe say versus the heel. It's a much more functional way to do it. Um, so I had someone email me that I was like this fraud and hack because the Wilson website had the Rush Pro 4.0 at like one and a half, like a half, like two millimeters more than what I had mine on heel to toe drop. And it's because, you know, I did it. Uh, my way which i think is you know at least i think it's the, the better way to do it but uh, what are you gonna do okay let's take some questions add to broadcast what i consider doing four foot lateral to medial cut might be surprised to see what brands are doing in that area yeah i have um well like this right here i do that on a lot of shoes um it's pretty easy to tell sometimes because in the treads, a lot of times you can see what the shank is doing in the forefoot. 
Um, and a lot of times I'll cut them on a diagonal when I go heel to toe. And so I'll be able to catch some of that too. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot of times I'll do that. Uh, I'll see. I'm, I'm trying to go back. I've never tried that shoe. I've never tried a Diodora. Um, 7,000. I've never tried it. Do they have memory foam? Uh, no, I mean, they have the ortholite, which is like a super lightweight insole rather than that. Just EVA. Um, Al, like I said, I, if they make a wide version, I'm not really sure who that would benefit. So, let's see. Mad Lads Anonymous. That's quite a name. Okay. How is this as a workout shoe? And for Pickleball, are they as good as Jet Mach 3? For Pickleball, they are not nearly as good as the Jet Mach 3. I mean, I don't know. So for... I'm thinking as a tennis player. So as a Pickleballer, yeah, you know what? If you're someone that does more, like, low to the ground, like, shimmy stepping, right? Like, you're you're using the inside of your feet a lot to push off, then I think they're a really good pickleball shoe. They're probably just as good as a Jet Mock. If you're more kind of like centered on the balls of your foot and you're, you know, then maybe not. Um, but durability-wise and comfort-wise, yes, I think they're just as good. And as a workout shoe, I think they're great because they're nice and wide. The foam is dense, so you can, like, weight lift in them, uh, and they don't have nearly the issues that they do on a tennis court. Okay, and now I'm going to try to catch up with some more questions. Do I think, do you think for match day shoes, the Jet Mach 3 is still better than the Fury 3? Yes, 100%. Um, if you want more, if you want a wider heel, or you want a wider ankle collar, if you want more play in the ankle, then no, then these are really good. These are much better. But if you want like a lockdown like armored tank, you know, go to battle type shoe, like uh, the gel resolution nine, then I would go with the Jet Mach 3. Here's the thing, the Jet Mach 3 is probably one of the best shoes in the last decade that has come out for tennis and pickleball. I mean, there, there's there's no, I mean, it. there's not much competition there, I would say. Especially if you're a tennis and pickleball player, or if you're just looking at them from en an engineering standpoint. The foam engineering of the Jet Mach 3, the treads, the uppers, Name one better shoe, you know, clearly better shoe than those. It's it's hard to name one. Um, you know, the the Raptors come close. The Soul Match, uh, Soul Court Boost, sorry, comes close. But it, you know, and like I said, there's no best shoe out there. You know, there's a best shoe for your foot. But I just think in terms of me looking at a shoe from a tennis player, a foot doctor, and then just like a shoe enthusiast. There's not much better than the, the Jet Mach 3 right now. Uh, so it, it, it's hard to get better than them. I fell in love with the Gel Resolution 9 thanks to me. <laughs> That's good. I'm sure uh, Asics likes to hear that. Uh, they make me feel confident. For step. Yeah, you know, the Gel Resolution 8 made me feel unconfident because I felt like I was slipping out of them so much. And then the 9s came around, and I and I didn't, I didn't want to, like, cut them open. So, you know, it, it was like, I mean, they only tweaked like this much, but they made it enough to where your heel sat in the shoe well enough to where you could actually, you know, if you were a medium to more of a high arch foot, you could use them. Okay, Mr. Sid, what is the closest thing to the Nike GP Turbo? I get this question constantly. Um, there is nothing. I mean, there's nothing with full length Zoom Strobel. There's nothing with a full length PebX plate out there. I think for the feel, like underfoot, I guess the New Balance Lab V2, because Fresh Foam X feels like Zoom, you know. But you know, in terms of the playability of them, uh, I mean, you're better off just buying a Nike basketball shoe, right? You're better off just like buying a pair of. Uh, like Jordan 36s or, um, no, uh, not Jordan 36s. Yeah, Jordan 36 or the KD 15. Like, go buy those. Those feel like the, the GP Turbo. But it, it seems like Nike took a lot of their best basketball minds, put them together on a really great shoe in 2021 or 2020, 
And then it was like, well, all right, forget it. Go back to the vapor line or whatever. Like they could have built a whole line of shoes off the turbos that everybody would have bought, you know? But so I'd say comfort and like feeling wise, Lav V2. I'd say if you want the feeling of them, get the KD15. And if you get the KD15, if you get it in the EP version, engineered performance, you can only get them on eBay. Um, or if, if you do live in an Asian uh, country, uh, if you do live somewhere, that you can get them there. Because that, that's that's what it is. EP comes out in the Asian markets first, and you can get them on eBay. That, that's like where I get a lot of basketball shoes from. Um, so if you look at the eBay seller ID4 shoes, like ID, like a government ID, four, the number four, shoes, all one word. Uh, they have KD15 EPs. And that's, you know, the best feeling. That's the closest feeling. Keep it to it. From past review, it sounded like you like to Jet Mach 2 better than Jet Mach 3. No, no, I like to Jet Mach 3 way better than Jet Mach 2. Um, the Jet Mach 2 is good. It's got that Kevlar in it. You know, that's pretty cool. The midsole foam on the Jet Mach 2 bottoms out so fast. Whereas on the Jet Mach 3, I mean, it'll last the apocalypse. Okay, Matthew. What's been my favorite shoe to review and tear down? I don't know. I mean, my personal favorite shoes this year, I actually had to go look at my list. Um, so I've had a lot, I mean, I've actually liked, if they're actually sitting right here, but in the basketball space has been the Rise Nitro just because Mac McClung and the NBA dunk contest. That was really fun. Then I would say probably after that, I'm going off screen, sorry. Um, I would say the Harden Volume 7 for basketball, even though they're not out yet and i'd say for tennis my favorite shoe to tear down has been the adidas cybersonic because it's a little more of an expensive shoe a little more premium stuff it, it does i mean it, there's just a lot going on with it i think is pretty cool it's just that i think my favorite shoe though this year um is coming up in another video uh, it hasn't that my favorite tennis shoe hasn't i haven't reviewed it yet i'd say right now my favorite tennis shoe that's been on the channel has been the uh gel resolution nine for sure uh, for this year, but my favorite tennis shoe is coming up, and I'll probably do that live as well. Sammy, how's it going, bud? Doc, I suffer from bad shin splints. What's the best basketball shoe? Um, I actually have a whole video on this. If you look at the Ultimate Basketball Shoe Guide, uh, I have a video on this now. And you know, really anything with a, a pretty with a stiff shank, something that's going to take a lot of the pressure off the inside of your foot. It also might have nothing to do with the basketball shoe. You might need orthotics. Uh, you might need to start doing tibial, um, anterior tibial tendon raises. Uh, you might have weakness in your anterior compartment. Um, so I would say look at the Ultimate Basketball Shoe Guide 2020. might be winter 2023 or just type in Ultimate Basketball Shoe Guide. It'll come up the last one. I have an entire list of shoes that I like for it. Uh, for that. So uh, make sure we don't have any other questions. I think I have... I think I've caught up, but okay. So like I said, I'll just do some housekeeping. I'm probably going to cut this off at the end, but I'll say thank you to everybody that has watched this in its entirety in the replay. But uh, for everyone that is here, uh, I'll just do some housekeeping stuff. So uh, URS, like I said, 32 out of 40. That's not terrible. Uh, so I would like to know if you would like to see more live reviews, obviously a little bit more, uh, you know, every time I do them, I'll get a little bit better uh, and do them a little more streamlined, hopefully keep the actual review to like nine to 10 minutes. I know today I kind of went over just because, you know, first time doing a, a live teardown. Uh, so my thoughts aren't always, you know, in my head as, as coherently as they should be. But I do like the format of doing some of these live so I can answer questions live. Because there's some things that came up in, in the review that I wouldn't have gotten to. Um but, uh, you know, I, I would love to know. Uh, you can leave me a comment here. Or just leave me a comment after I, I release the video. But I would love to know, like, if, if you are interested in seeing these ones, uh, seeing these teardowns d done live with some of these shoes, that we can kind of talk about them uh, in person. Probably on a topic, but if I played paddle. No, so paddle is pretty popular here. Platform tennis is really popular here. Um, I don't play it. I, I was offered to be in this league when uh, I was living in Pittsburgh there was a group of guys that would call my dad and I to play and we just never did uh, 
So I would. It's just, you know, put it this way. Play tennis. I had to learn how to play pickleball <laughs> for this channel. And I'm trying to get better at basketball for this channel because everyone makes fun of me playing basketball. So I'm trying to get better about Actually, I might take lessons with a coach here. Uh, so I'm trying to do that. And I've gotten, like, super into – like technical mountain biking, right? Like going down like, you know, blues and blacks on, on mountain bike trails. So I'm doing all that. I mean, I just don't really have time to uh, do anything more. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. You know, people were making fun of the colorway on the Rise Nitros. And I, I like the, the orange. Maybe it's because my high school colors were orange. But, yeah. What's my new favorite shoe review coming up? Is it tennis shoes? Yeah, oh, you'll see when it comes out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I want to do them live. It's less work for me to do them live. The problem is on the replays that people don't like to sit here and listen to me saying um and ah all the time and, you know, check in with the chat. And okay, yeah, someone's got a question and I go off on a tangent about, you know, God knows what. So, like I said, I would like to do them where I can just get the review in, cut that off so, like, the video is only 10 minutes you know, and people just see it as, as a review and like, you know, my normal reviews. And I don't have like all the graphics up on screen either right now, which I don't love, you know, like I can do this, like I can, I can pump the, you know, these videos up here and show the shoe from the background, but I can't do it kind of like my edited reviews. So like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know if you're okay with doing some more live reviews. I probably do them more in the tennis space uh, because I just know a lot more about tennis and so i can you know answer questions on the fly pretty easily about tennis shoes and um you know be fun especially if there's tennis matches coming on i can put one on in the background we can talk about it so croc man i still want to know if you like crocs uh love the live reviews would you would love to see clips of you playing basketball oh trust me there's lots of them out there if you look at any of my reviews it's all me playing and all people in the comments making fun of me um uh, Live is awesome. We can ask questions and answer the way. Yeah, I like that too because now that the channel is bigger, you know, and, you know, all of my videos get substantially more views, uh, it is hard to answer not even just every question, but e just even just a fraction of questions that I get. And a lot of questions, you know, unfortunately are things that I say word for word in the video. And I'm just, I get so sick of writing the same thing. Like it's in the video, it's in the video, it's in the video. And then all of a sudden it's 45 minutes, an hour later, I have not answered one legitimate question yet. It's all stuff that people could have watched in the first two minutes of the video, but they choose not to watch it. And so I, and it, with YouTube, you can't filter comments. Like you have to respond to them to remove them from the comment feed. So you get this big log of nonsense right and then at the bottom is like you know somebody like Jinjin actually you know who's been watching these videos for like the last two years right and comments on like every video like then there's there's their comment and i don't get to it because i'm i just don't feel like you know messing with somebody asking me like are these okay for wide feet and 15 times in the video i say these are great for wide feet so Congrats on 109. Yeah, 109,000 was the, was the target. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if I can get to um, 500,000, a million in my entire YouTube career, that would be awesome. Uh, but at this point, you know, like getting to 1,000 was really important to me to get the channel monetized so I could actually like not lose money buying shoes. That was pretty important. <laughs> uh, and now, you know, I'd like to, you know, I'm just, honestly, subscribers now is not as important to me that I've hit the 100,000, that was like a real milestone I wanted to hit. Now it's more, you know, can I build this sustainably? Can I do this for the long run? How do I keep this channel going sustainably uh, for the long run, for the long haul? That's that's kind of my goal right now. Why have we never seen any more Agassi shoes released? What was my favorite double A shoe? So they did, actually. <sighs> Let me look at my channel. I actually, I know this. Um, I'm looking this up right now. They did release one. Let's see. Nike. It was. No. Oh, if someone goes back and looks at my library, 
they re-released one of Agassi's shoes a couple years ago in two in a new one they released a, a new version of it and then they re-released the old um and i'm completely blanking on it. i had the french open version so number one because no one cares about andre agassi anymore i mean unfortunately no one care i mean you know put it this way rafa nadal doesn't have a signature shoe right no novak djokovic barely has a signature shoe right it's just the court ff3 the colorway is the novak that's it right Federer got a signature shoe the minute he retired. Serena had a, uh, a signature shoe for like five minutes, right? So the companies are not making signature tennis shoes right now. It's just not as po it's not popular enough for them to do it. That's why you see signature basketball shoes, but not signature tennis shoes. So um, I think that's why, because no one, you know, he's in, in the world of sneaker, like, you know, in, in terms of like, you know, sneaker people, sneaker heads, you know, he's irrelevant compared to someone like LeBron, Jordan, you know, uh, Luka Doncic, those people who are, you know, in people's minds. In our minds, yeah, you know, he's anything but irrelevant. But, you know, someone's going to someone's gonna put this as a meme, Andre Agassi is irrelevant. But I think in just in terms of, like, sneaker culture and, and retroing a shoe and bringing it back, I, I just don't see it. Not 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 when they can pump out another KD shoe or another LeBron shoe. Let's see. What has been my worst tennis injury? Tennis? I <laughs> Okay, there's been two. If anyone from my college team's watching, they'll know. One is I tore my oblique muscle right here serving a tennis ball in college. Just went out serving it and it just completely tore. It was crazy. I had this giant like black and blue streak going down my chest for a while. The worst one though is we were playing Bloomsburg University. And why why they put the lights inside the fence is beyond me. So in college, my whole game was just running back and forth, running back and forth. I just get everything, right? I had no power compared to the people I was playing. Right? I was I was playing number two singles, number one doubles. So the only way I'd win matches is if I just outlasted people. So I'm streaking across the court for a ball and smack right into the light post. I gave myself a horrible concussion. I had headaches for weeks. That was my worst injury. Um, I actually had to be like belted to the seat on the way home in the van because I was talking so much nonsense. And like I was reaching for the steering wheel like off of our tennis coach. Like I was like going crazy. And so before they could get me help, they actually had to like, uh, this, this kid Rick, who was a big dude like had to hold me down they had to like take me to the seat um that was my worst tennis injury uh it was bad yeah i actually have the v2 ultras now uh way of wade just sent them to me um so yeah hey brian yeah it does look like the lotto for sure it definitely has uh he's talking about the pro pulse fury three yeah it kind of has that same sign same with the jet mock three i mean that's a pretty popular design now to kind of cut out urethane for sure what are my thoughts on the Nike Vapor 9.5 or am I going to review them? So Jack, I might, you know, if, if somebody sends them to me, if, if one of the retailers I work with sends them to me, I don't know if I'm going to buy them. Thing is, is they've already been reviewed, you know, I mean, and I didn't review them, but I mean, somebody did, uh, when they came out in the first place. And the reason Nike's re-releasing them is because so many people are, are still wearing them. So they're obviously a good shoe. They play a lot like the Vapor 10, in my opinion. Uh, just a little bit of a stiffer midsole setup, you know, kind of a, n not as much play in the shank as the tens did. So, and, and the vapor pros did. So, I mean, like I said, if I get sent them, I, I'll probably review them. I don't know if, if, if I have the appetite to purchase them again. I'm, I mean, I, you know, I say that and then I probably will. Hello, Dr. Zach. You can just call me Zach. Can you do more running shoe videos? Yes. So let's see. I have three right over there they're waiting to get reviewed um running shoe reviews to me are still difficult because of all the sports that i review i run the least so my knowledge is all like institutional knowledge of running like what does a foot doctor know about running whereas like basketball tennis pickleball like i play them enough where i can really like kind of get into the nuances of the shoe as a, from a player's perspective whereas for like a runner um, it, 
I'm coming at them from like that. I mean, when you watch a running review of mine, that's like all Dr. Zach, not like the foot doctor Zach. So. What is my favorite midsole tech for basketball shoes? Zoom Air with a stiff shank. For sure. Have I got a chance to try the jaw ones? Yeah, check my channel. I have a review out right now. I love how I'm getting like all these questions now. Like I closed the review too. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Is Mizuno Wave Endurance she referred to in the last feed better than the Extreme Tour 5? You cannot name in testing. Yeah, Derek. So I actually heard someone got these. And um, so the, the is it Enduro Tour or Endurance Tour? I, I, I don't know. They're over here somewhere. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. Like the Wave Exceed Tour 5, I don't really like. the These are the, the Endurance Tour. They're out of this world. I mean, they are so great. Um, I'll be doing a review on them. I'm going to do a live review on that one too, just so I can fanboy out on them. Uh, but yeah, they're awesome. Looking for a new pair of Wolf's Den. Oh boy. Looking for a new pair of basketball shoes. Big guy heavy who plays point guard suggestions. You know what? Um, typically I say go watch my review. But for this, since I haven't reviewed them yet, the Harden Volume 7 I think are probably really good. Don't quote me on that. But um, if you have a wider foot, I don't know if you didn't say that. Uh, but... Harden Volume 7, good shoe to go to battle with. Heavier player, a little bit more strength in the midsole. But yeah, my review will come out on that this week. Either probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I have to edit it. I went on vacation last week to Disney and to NASA. So I wasn't doing any editing. Robert, how about a retro review of the Air Trainer 1 that's been re-released? Yeah, I've heard a few people asking me about that um i might hey one of my favorite thank you very much i appreciate it i always wonder like who is sitting around watching all of my videos because by the time they get released i've watched them like seven times and i hate the sound of my own voice that's why another reason why i like these live reviews kind of have to hear my own voice again <laughs> um, why no more boost in adidas tennis shoes that is a great question that's the one place they should be. You know, in a basketball shoe, I mean, boost is good if, if you're a center or someone coming down off of crash landings over and over and over and over again. But I mean, bounce foam or bounce pro in a basketball shoe, I think is the best setup. Bounce pro is, is where it's at. For a tennis shoe though, where you stay on the ground most of the time. Yeah, I don't know why. I, mean, it's, I think, yeah, it's a good question. Tennis Spin showed the Endurance Tour two days ago. Yeah, so when I got them, I've had them for like three, four months. And on the box, it said, for testing purposes only, you know, these, like, they're under an NDA. And I was, and they said the NDA is just kind of like a panacea, like, you do not talk about them. We'll let you know when you can. And so I just didn't, so we're, I, I've, been, I've been playing them a lot. And uh, then someone said, like, oh, yeah, they've been talking. Like, they're online now. So <sighs> maybe this week, like Thursday or Friday, let's do a – I'll jump on a live. We can do a review of them. Because I have – I I was going to say I don't have my external hard drive. I could say I could show you all the videos of me playing them. Brian, because the – your reviews are the Jet Mach 3s, Lottos, and PG6s. And those are – that's a good lineup. And the PG is my favorite shoe for pickleball, both gym floor and hardcourt. Yeah, especially if you get the harder rubber, if you get the EP version of the PG6s, they're awesome. Love the PG6s. And people, like, hate on them. I don't know why. They're First of all, they're a budget basketball shoe. And if what you get out of a budget basketball shoe with those, it's awesome, especially compared to other budget Nike shoes. And then people are moaning and complaining. I don't know why people would moan and complain about them, because there's React foam in them for some. Who cares? Gnarly shin splints. So... You got to figure out what's causing the shin splints first. Is it anterior weakness? Is it um, your muscles are blowing up in their compartment? Are you over pronating? Um, do you need to work on kind of like muscle strength in your foot? Like, should you be in minimalist shoes or barefoot shoes for a little while, trying to strengthen those muscles up? Should you avoid barefoot shoes? Wait, um, you need you kind of need to be examined for sure. Uh, but there, I have I have videos showing my favorite shoes for shin splints for both tennis and pickleball. Do I have a basketball sports shoe rotation? I don't have any rotation right now. I don't step on a court of any kind unless I have a new shoe to review. And if you look over there, can't see it, 
but I've got a whole stack of shoes that still need reviewed. So I have no time to go and just joyride on a tennis court or a basketball court without taking a GoPro and putting it behind me and actually reviewing a shoe just I have so many to get through. Um, I've had these, what, three months? And I just never got to the, around to the review because I had so many other shoes come. Uh, the A6 I had for four weeks and I just couldn't, you know, I just, I have so many shoes. So I don't really have a rotation right now. Um, if I did, I'd be playing in the PG6s for basketball. And for tennis, I'd probably be in the Raptors just because of like my foot. That's probably what I'd be in. Or the um, the New Balance Lab V2s. Not that they're the best shoes in the world. It's just that's what fits my foot the best. All right. So with that being said, we're coming up on an hour. I can't believe we did this for an hour. This was supposed to be a 10-minute live stream. <laughs> so I might actually cut all this off at the end here uh, just so people don't get bored with this but uh anyway thank you very much for hanging out on the live stream with me like i said let's do the mizunos this week or next weekend or it some sometime soon let's do the mizunos live and talk about them uh because they are a game changer at least in my opinion um so everybody thank you so much for hanging out with me and uh i'll see you